Hello survivors and welcome to another Silly Saturday. In today's video we are playing with the Chaos Walker. We have a firework of a build for you today. Now what we decided to do is there are three orb skills uh, that all do the same thing where they launch an orb which quickly fires projectiles in all directions. Uh, Shadow Orb causes Cursed, Arcane Orb causes Exposed, and Sanctified Orb causes Disoriented. So we use the Chaos Walker because he has access to Sanctified Orb and Shadow Orb. And then we just run Skill Mastery Arcane to get the Arcane Orb. Now what I did is with unconventional starts, I kept re-rolling until I landed up getting Arcane Orb at the very, very beginning. So that I had the 10 re-rolls to get all the buffs and the Shadow Orb as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, I did only find Arcane Orb right at the end, like three minutes into the run, uh, three and a half minutes into the run. So we did use Chaos Golem just because it's the least, uh, you know, heavy or intense skill that I could think of at the time. So we just ran that, it's fine, it doesn't really matter, you can run whatever you want until you find what is necessary. And then for our uh, tenacity runes we're running multicast mastery, critical mastery, versatile strength and then extended reach and the reason we use extended reach is it increases the range of the projectiles by 80 percent that means that the shadow orb the arcane orb and the sanctified orb are going to last longer and therefore fire off all more projectiles until they dissipate so we'll show you exactly what that's like sit back relax and enjoy the video for what it is I only do this on low curse so that we can see the visuals really really nicely as you can see each individual one I think arcane orb is actually the hardest one to see especially when it mixes with sanctified orb but you can see that each of them have a different color where arcane orb is the small orbs um, the small uh, missiles that you can see shooting all over the place the blue ones uh, sanctified orb being white and then the sacred orb being uh, sacred orb the shadow orb being the purple ones over there. Uh, what's really really cool is the damage for sacred or shadow orb without might up is actually 666 cursed total damage uh, which is kind of weird and wonderful at the same time because you know it's cursed damage there you go you can have a look at the number there so really really cool really really interesting just really funny that that happened uh, with a cursed skill so quite weird that landed on that exact number. Just such a nice, just a such 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 a nice feeling. Oops, that didn't work very well. As you can see, we have like no defenses, but uh, as you can see, we also just completely wreck everything's face when the skills are up. All right, so we are going to have to work on a little bit more defenses. We have zero armor. That does make a lot of sense. We're going to go cast frequency grab as much of those extras as possible again we do not have uh, we've got versatile strength so we do need to grab everything we haven't had before uh, cast frequency a nice juicy multicast although we picked up a multicast for lasting i think that just was it does not affect the buffs even though they are lasting so the buffs do not get a multicast uh, just so you do know, uh, you know, in case you, you wanted to find out, okay, does that work or not? It doesn't. Um, there we go. We're going to take those and potency for bloodlust. That is fantastic. The damage increases for lasting does affect the buffs. So as long as you get like the damage increases, it does actually affect the amount of potency. It's like getting a potency upgrade for them. It's only the multicast that won't affect uh lasting buff skills tag but everything else the damage the cooldown all those kinds of things does affect uh, lasting as a tag on buffs it's just buffs can't be multicast so it makes sense to not actually occur all right movement speed some block we're just going to keep going for all of these weird and wonderful things more movement speed yep we had a very nice movement speed right now so we probably won't have to dodge any longer um, sanctified orb giving us uh, not sanctified orb no it is sanctified orb sanctified orb giving us disoriented is actually really really good for this especially since we are running critical mastery and then trying to get as much crit into the build as possible is going to be really really good as well 
funny enough, we have a uh, a buff that gives us damage. Two buffs that give us that give us damage. We've got Martin Glacial Affinity. We've then got Arcane Power for cooldown. I mean, multicast. Sorry. We've got Bloodlust for cooldown and for movement speed. We've got Sugar Rush for movement speed. We've got. Uh, what else do we have? We've got like a buff for nearly everything. The only buff that I think needs to be introduced into the game right now is one for crit chance and crit damage. That would be a really cool buff. But I know we do, I guess we do get that buff there with the lightning uh, surge because it gives all of your skills dazed. So I, I guess that's the crit buff. Completely forgot about it. I'm like, oh, they should add a crit buff into the game. They've got a buff for everything. And then they actually did. They added a lightning surge in from the assassin, which means that all attacks apply dazed. So you're always going to be critting. Such a beautiful skill. Such a nice silly Saturday. Being completely surrounded by these, uh, you know, firework of his skills. 16 levels let's go with multicast to make it even worse grab all of this multicast even more potency over there gangrene there for damage get the crit we only are 90 percent that is disgusting potencies over there cast frequency we nearly have bloodlust up all of the time we don't need the area of effect over here even though it is a legendary it doesn't affect us in any way shape or form we're going to grab a fire shield so that we have the extra three damage from versatile strength uh, three percent damage uh, just so that we got that extra bit of damage My computer doesn't like me right now. This is a killer. If we had to keep going like this onto higher overlord stages, I think we'd be in a bit of trouble. I don't even think YouTube is going to like this a lot because of how many projectiles are on the screen at any given time. Okay, four more level ups, five more level ups. We're leveling up really, really quickly, even though we're not really doing much. So over here, we get the damage increase for empowering. You can see we're on 200, 220 and 145. We are going to lock this one so we can show you. 220, 145, I went to 235 and 160. So like I mentioned earlier, it does affect them. We don't need area of effect for these, so we are going to banish that. Go get the, the multi, uh, sorry, cost frequency for the bloodlust, the rare one. And then we're on a 0.5 second uh, cooldown type for Bloodlust, which is uh, respectable without really having to put a lot of effort into it at an Overlord Cycle 1. As soon as we get to like the next cycle or whatever the case is, we could even now go and banish the cast frequency and start working on only the potency for it if we wanted to. And we could have these skills up 24-7, but I think that would just be an arsehole completely. But uh, as you can see, pretty, pretty intense little skills over there. Pretty fun. Very, very active. Very, very, I don't know. I really, really enjoyed them. And I think Sanctified might do the most amount of damage over here. But Shadow Orb could be, oh, actually Arcane Orb was uh, quite close behind it. So really give, the, give it a shot, guys. It's a really, really fun build. It's a really, really, really awesome to play with. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And always remember, keep safe survivors. Until next time, cheers.